All right, it is three o'clock, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. It is the day after a snow day and um, a weather late start day, so um, this is probably going to be me recording this like a screencast, and that is totally fine. So I'm Mindy Curtis, and I am an art specialist here in Canyon School District, and I am doing a bite-sized PD today about using Jamboard to support equitable student collaboration. Um, we had a question to talk about in the chat, but since this is going to be more of a screencast, we're not going to worry about that. And I went ahead and recorded. All right, we have professional development norms, but this is going to be an after the fact PD, so we can worry about that if we're doing this in person anytime and there's no one to have microphones or videos, so we'll skip through that as well. Um, everything we do here in Instructional Supports Department in Canyon School District is supported and tied to our MTSS framework. So today we are looking at evidence-based instructional priorities for academics, um, and that is where this specific strategy is tied in our MTSS framework. So our learning intentions and success criteria for this professional development professional development is that we're going to use Jamboard as a collective graphic organizer so we can use it to support discussion structures that promote equitable student collaboration. And what I say equitable student collaboration, um, I'm talking about a few things. So when students are working in groups together to create a project of some kind or a product of some kind, um, sometimes uh, the age old issue is not everyone does the same amount of work or not everyone participates. Um, often one person's doing a bulk of the work, other people aren't participating, or one person is taking over while other people want to do more. Um, so there are some things we can do to support that when we're preparing our students um, to share in collaboration. Um, and Jamboard is a really useful tool for that, and I'll show you why. Um, and I'll show you what Jamboard is. So. Um, success criteria, I'm going to know when I'm successful, when I can use Jamboard in the role of a student collaborator. So I'll show you how to do that today. I'll kind of be a student of one collaborating with me. And um, also, I would love people to begin to feel confident in creating a graphic organizer and a discussion structure. So there's two different parts of that um, that support equitable student collaboration, where students are creating um, a project or collaborating together in an equitable way. Everyone's doing a similar amount of work and learning in that project. Okay, so our agenda is, first, we're gonna talk about Jamboard. What is Jamboard? We're gonna, I'm gonna show you that. We're gonna explore it as a tool for encouraging and supporting all students to collaborate and contribute equitably in a group. Um, we talked about that and we're gonna have time um, if you're doing this beyond. I would love you to feel confident in beginning to create your own Jamboard for student collaboration. And I have some pre-created templates for you um, that you can use to do that. So what is Jamboard? Jamboard is a Google product. Um, and essentially, it's a digital whiteboard for cloud uh, collaboration. I'm actually in Jamboard right now in this presentation using this right now. This is not a Google Slides. And I have my whole screen showing so you can see how I get there and how I use it. Um, however, I am using it to present slides as well. So I have added. Um, created these slides in Google Slides and chosen them as the background for my Jamboard. Um, but it's really not meant to be a presentation tool. It's meant to be a whiteboard um, for collaboration. So um, one of the reasons I like it for collaboration um, is it's collaborative, like Google Documents, multiple people can write, multiple people can write in it, um, Google Slides, etc. It's accessible from home. Um, often, back in the days, I started teaching in 2005, so I would have kids working on a paper together, and then one kid would have to take it home and type it all, etc. cetera. Um, it's a product like Google that is accessible from anyone's home computer uh, or phone. Um, it's a simple tools. It has simple tools for sharing. So if you're familiar with Google Slides, there's a lot of tools. There's a lot of different things you can do in there. Um, Jamboard has a lot fewer tools. Um, they're down the side here. We're going to look at them in just a second. Um, but it keeps students kind of focused and is less overwhelming because of that. Um, the uh, it documents students work easily for you. So in collaboration, 
sometimes uh, the question uh, that teachers present, right, is like that um, I don't really know who's working or how much they're doing or who did this work um, until maybe even the end. And maybe even then you don't know when they turn it in who did that. But this is a way that students can document along their way who is contributing what to the conversations and ideas on a group project because um, you can have access to it as well. And I'd like Jamboard because it feels like a whiteboard, not a presentation. Sometimes when we're working in Google Slides, it feels like we're creating a final product that we're going to present. This is a place for brainstorming. This is a place for ideas. And students can't edit your templates. So you can create templates in Canva or Google Slides or wherever you like to create things and put them into Jamboard. And it's pretty hard for students to edit those. Um, so I can right now, for example, uh, draw, use a pen and draw in here, but I can't um, edit the back. I can't like go in and click, I can't click this text. I can add text to it, but I can't take it off. So you can create things and templates in there um, and uh, rules and graphic organizers and the kids, it's gonna stay there for them. So let me uh, just explore Jamboard a little bit. Here's an empty, uh, page on my Jamboard. So there's a pen, right? Like I just used, um, there's a pen and I can make it kind of, it has some different options in what colors if kids are writing um, or drawing different things. You can choose markers, fatter things um, that can kind of help organize kids' ideas by different colors. It can, I can erase that with an eraser. I'm not going to spend a lot of time erasing it. I can just have a select tool there's sticky notes that are really, really fun. I love the sticky notes in Jamboard. And so I can save that on there and then I can move those around. I can choose different sticky note colors. So people have like everyone, um, you're gonna use orange or you're gonna use pink, um, et cetera. So you, they can distinguish who's giving ideas. Um, they can add images. So kids who think visually or kids who are learning English um, or kids who, who just like to work in images or if they're doing something that needs images, um, they can add images uh, they can circle things. You can add text boxes. Um, and there's this laser tool where you can kind of just circle something and like, ooh, ooh, I really like this idea. Ooh, let's use sticky notes or whatever it is. So those are the things you can do in Jamboard. You can set a different background. And right here, this image is how you set a background that um, you can uh, add that template as I was talking about. You can clear the frame. So that, that can happen. Students can do that. You can clear it. Um, uh, but that is pretty much what there is to do in Jamboard. So, and you can restore your uh, Jamboard as well. So um, when we're using Jamboard, so everything I just did, you could do with big post-it notes in person, right? Like those big ones. Um, you could do it with some butcher paper in your classroom. You could do it um, with whiteboards in your classroom. You could do it, um, like I said, on Google Slides. You could do this a lot of different places, right? Kids can collaborate and write down their ideas in a few different ways. Um, so Jamboard is not the only tool for this. So I'm going to advocate that whether you use Jamboard or not, that when you're having students um, collaborate in groups, that they are thinking and you're thinking of two parts of that collaboration. There's the preparation and then there's the equitable sharing. Um, so is every student, the thing to think about is every student prepared to share. There's a prepare and there's a share when they collaborate. And I advocate for the use of collaborative graphic organizers when they are um, preparing, that they're writing down their ideas in a way that's structured, and that you're giving them a discussion structure um, that prepares them to work collaboratively um, and give feedback in a group, whatever it is they're doing. I'll show you a few feedback structures as we go. So that preparation and the structure for sharing are the really the keys. It's not Jamboard. It's those structures that are going to give the students the equitable collaboration that are, is going to um, support and encourage all students to participate equally and discourage the Mindy's of the world from coming in and dominating and saying, oh, I have this idea. Um, let's just do everything I want to do. Or the students who sit back and let people do the work for them. So I'm going to give you some examples of that. So. I taught theater. Um, I still teach theater, uh, but I taught in Kenya School District when I taught. I taught theater, and 
Um, kids would write plays together and present those plays and movies. I had students doing film and doing movies. Um, and there was always a lot of ideas flying around when they were figuring out what sets and costumes and sounds and props they wanted. And often one kid kind of dominated. Um, and a lot of students, students who maybe uh, took some time to gather their thoughts or students who were learning English or students who process a little slower, often were left out. And someone wanted black blocks with red fabric, I'm going to say, what if we used um, the chairs and turn them all backwards? Um, so I'm going to put that for an idea. And if you want kids to document that as they go, um, you could ask them to put their names. So you know, as a teacher, if you want to come back and look at this, who contributed those ideas? Um, costume ideas. Ooh, someone wants to wear cloaks. Um, maybe I think we should wear top hats, right, for my ideas. And we can put those in there. And also there's directions. These directions are really important. Of course, you'd go through this uh, with them as a teacher to use text box or sticky notes um, in Jamboard to brainstorm their ideas about the tech elements you're group could use in your performance. You're gonna work independently, so that's an important part of it. There's a time of silence or of individual work. Um, they don't do this while they're discussing, um, even if it's five minutes of silent time, or they take, it's an assignment at home, go, go home, add these ideas, come back ready to discuss. Um, you will share, discuss, and select ideas after your group brainstorming. So there's another part of this. Once they've added those ideas, there is a sharing structure. So a sharing structure is really important because even when they come back ready to discuss, um, they're gonna have a struggle equitably talking about these ideas. So um, there's a structure here. Each person, um, the person with the most recent past birthday shares first, then they share around. They're gonna share one element. And then we're gonna go back and we're gonna circle because that's the thing we can do in Jamboard, circle the ideas I like the most. And the thing about the circles is they do fill, so you have to unfill them if they're circling ideas. Um, so then we can go back and discuss and select some of those ideas. Now I've asked kids here to keep in mind that if their, group, their idea isn't chosen, that's okay. Um, it's just not the right idea for this project. So that sharing structure is a really important part of the equitable collaboration. I have another example here, uh, a peer feedback organizer. So peers giving each other feedback is a really important part of the growth process of, of any um, content where they are learning a skill. So um, again, in teaching theater, students giving each other feedback on scenes or monologues. Um, if you uh, teach music or you teach writing or you teach um, have kids doing presentations in class, or you're doing a wood shop or anything where they're creating a product. Um, having kids give each other feedback is a really helpful tool. However, the process of giving the feedback can be really daunting to kids. And it can be damaging if they don't do it correctly and they give each other critical feedback that is hurtful. So um, I would use this as a graphic organizer. So I have the artist named Jamie and she made some dog photos in an art class. So she took pictures of her dog and I said, you captured the essence of your dog really well. These are fun and they fit their assignments. Those are the positives, but questions. So you could say whatever you want. You could say next steps or um, critique. I specifically asked students to give questions. Um, why did you choose those pink glasses? Why did you take the pictures outside? Those are some questions I could ask her and other peers could come in and um, maybe someone else, maybe they have a friend named Fred and he said different things, right? He could come in and give uh, Jamie his critique of a uh, review of her dog photos. And next page, there is the sharing of the feedback process. So I often use the person with the most recent uh, past birthday receives the feedback first, but 
you could use um, the person with the longest hair or whatever it is that you want. So they share their thoughts, they continue sharing until the feedback is shared with that one artist and they repeat the process for another student. So I even had a way I had them give feedback. They had to say the specific positive things and then the questions and then keep all of their purpose to the feedback um, is to allow the artist to hear how they see their work. That was the purpose of this assignment. You could change that if you wanted, of course. And I even had guidelines for the artists receiving the feedback. Those are all in there because kids need to know how to discuss in the group. They can prepare and then they have to share. So um, I have an example of a Jamboard here that if I had people here, we would use collaboratively. Um, but I'll just show you what that is. So we can even do this for brainstorming of how to use ideas. So how would I use Jamboard in my classes? I actually did do this for a few teachers yesterday. Um, and one of the things they said is a KWL chart. They could write that on there. Um, one was giving feedback for presentations. We could use the sticky note. We could put that in there. So those are some of the ideas. Um, we could brainstorm together. Now, again, there's a discussion structure. So we're gonna circle at least one of your colleagues' ideas that you like to notice or could possibly use. So I didn't think about prior to yesterday, the idea of using a KWL chart. Oh, that's already selected, okay. So, I like that idea. I could use that idea. And then uh, we would discuss those out as a group. So there's a prepare and there's a share. So this is the point where this is the information and structures for you to, to do this on your own. How do I create this? How do I do this template process? Um, if you're familiar with Jamboard, you probably know the ins and outs of how to make this. Um, the templates, the graphic organizers, and add in those um, instructions. Now, the instructions don't have to be in Jamboard. Those could be on a piece of paper or in Canvas somewhere. I like having them right here because it's only one place for kids. Um, so I have this link here, and you'll have access to this Jamboard, or I have a Google slide of this presentation as well. I'm not sure which one you'll have access to. Um, but in here, if you paste it in here, I actually have it up, but I'm and do it again. It's going to force um, you to make a copy of uh, some templates. So it's making that copy for me right now. And this is a Google Slides. So creating these graphic organizers in Jamboard itself um, is not really possible and would be quite laborious. So in Google Slides is where I like to create them. Some people use Canva, etc., to create those backgrounds. Um, but I have some templates here that when you've made that copy, you can edit all you want. I have both of those um, discussion structures you could use. You can edit them any way you would like. I have some other template slides. You could change this to um, science project brainstorm, right? Whatever it is you want. I highlighted in yellow the things that you probably want to change. You could take that off from being yellow, etc. So, and then down here are uh, the steps. They're also here on my Jamboard, but so you're gonna make this first copy. You're gonna change the slides, um, edit the templates the way you want them. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna screenshot when it's the way we want it to be. Let's say I've fixed this up and it is my science project brainstorm. And I wanna put that I'm going to screenshot that on my Mac, it was Command Shift 4. If you have a PC, you're gonna to need to use the SNP tool. You can just search for that. We're gonna take that screenshot and then I'm gonna open a Jamboard. So Jamboard lives in your Google suite and often it's at the bottom. And if you're doing it in your drive already and you're going to new, you usually have to go to more to find your Jamboard. So I'm gonna go into my Jamboards. I have a lot of Jamboards I've been working on for this specifically, um, but I have a few. I'm gonna do a new one. Down in the bottom corner is where I made a new one. I'm gonna to set to my background. I'm gonna browse my computer because I just took a screenshot. Let's see, that's a tech ideas brainstorm. Here's my one, I think I want a science project. I'm gonna put that in there. 
And I would do the same thing with the discussion structures when I had them the way I wanted on page two. So that's kind of the basics of how you do it. The creating of the templates is the thing that takes the longest time. So this is where I'd kind of give you time to do that and ask questions. Um, so I walked you through all of that. So, um, we chose that background for both pages. Um, so distributing this to kids, there, there's kind of two options. You can make um, one Jamboard and then make copies of it. So if you go into Jamboard right here um, in these three dots, you can make a copy of it. And let's say you have five groups in your class, you could make five copies and then put those links and send those to the groups that you wanted. Or you could make one large Jamboard um, like I have done over here. I have a 20 page Jamboard um, and I just included it in like we had this discussion structure right here, right within my lesson. I put my slides into there. You can ask kids to do it as you teach that way. Now, the downside of that is that kids can see each other's and that they could edit each other's discussions. They could go into each other's groups. So it's really up to you um, how you do that. Now, again, Jamboard is not the only way to create these discussion structures. You could have them do this on a piece of paper. You could have them do this um, on butcher paper or, or whatever. The thing that I like about Jamboard is that it documents it for uh, quite a while. So when you're ready to go back and grade their um, ability to collaborate with each other and use it as a formative assessment potentially of what they know that you could do that. And it's harder to do that with a bunch of butcher paper in your room and keep that for every single one of your classes and every single one of your groups. It's a little more sustainable. All right, so I went back. So that is, um, Pretty much it. You're going to make those copies. You're going to get the kids their links through Canvas, put it in a slide, presentation, a page, whatever it is. Um, so that's the end of this presentation. That is the um, how to use Jamboard as a collaboration tool with discussion structures. But remember, it's not the Jamboard that is uh, the important part of this. It's the uh, collaborative graphic organizers and the discussion structures that get kids to collaborate, collaborate equitably and to um, all be a part of their projects that they're working on. So thanks so much for watching this video, and I hope you have um, a great time using this tool or uh, using another tool for supporting equitable collaboration.